This is part two of my tutorial series on MIDI. So in this part two, I'm going to talk about MIDI connections. So originally when MIDI came out, it was mostly for connecting musical keyboards or tone modules to your laptop or computer. So you could either play things back from the laptop into a tone module or you could play a musical keyboard into the computer and record music and play it back. So you would have a USB cable coming from your computer to a MIDI interface. In this case, this is a MIDI hub. This has uh, three MIDI ins and three MIDI outs, and it also has USB in. So in this case, I can put USB in and then send signals out to three different MIDI devices. And then you would use a five pin uh, MIDI cable, physical cable to connect to your tone module or to your keyboard. And you'd have a MIDI cable going out to the keyboard, and you also probably have another MIDI cable coming back in from the keyboard, second cable, to communicate, send MIDI back into the laptop if you're going to record music. So this is the way we kind of started out with MIDI. But as other manufacturers got using MIDI in their devices, then we discovered that you could actually use MIDI for show control. So in this case here, I have my show control computer or I may be playing back audio files or audio cues or tracks for my show, but I'm also sending out MIDI signals to other devices that are going to be running during the show. Um, so again, USB cable out, and I'm going to use, be using physical MIDI cables here. So USB cable out, then I have a MIDI cable going to my lighting console. Some of the lighting consoles, particularly the older ones, had uh, MIDI in on them. Some of the new ones actually have MIDI in on them still where you can send certain MIDI commands to the lighting console. So once you've designed your lighting show, you can send MIDI commands to the lighting console, such as a go command, to progress to the next cue, to the next cue, to the next cue, which becomes very useful when you're trying to synchronize audio cues with your lighting cues. And then I can also use MIDI commands going to mixers. A lot of the new um, digital mixers now have MIDI interfaces on them where you can send commands to the mixer. And in this case, if you're doing a show, uh, the mixers are capable of memorizing microphone cues. So I might use this to do microphone cues during the show. I have maybe two actors on in scene one and scene two, there's 28. I could be sending MIDI signals to my digital audio mixer to turn microphones off and on. So again, it's all about automation. And then I might have projections. I might have slides or actual videos that I'm projecting. So in this case, I'm going to use another MIDI adapter here, but send a MIDI signal out and then USB cable into the laptop, then my laptop may be uh, doing projections. So again, in this case here, I'm using hardware cables, USB cable in, then MIDI cables out from the hub. So in this case here, I have to change my MIDI signals back to a USB input so I can get them into my laptop since laptops don't have MIDI inputs on them. Now, We've gone beyond the hardware MIDI cables, five pin cables, and now we do a lot of Cat5 connections because you can also send MIDI over Cat5. So we can look at that same kind of a setup but using Cat5 cables and using a network switch. So again, I'm using my show control, but then I'm sending uh, MIDI over Cat5 cable to the network switch, and then it's going out to the various devices via Cat5 cable. So you no longer have to use just MIDI cables to do that. And I'll be talking about the software that you need to have to be able to do this. And with that in mind, then you can also just go the route of using a Wi-Fi router. So if your device can communicate via Wi-Fi, then you're able to send MIDI signals out to the device via Wi-Fi. So there's some uh, opportunities to do a lot of communicating from one computer to several different devices that you're using for your show. Then another thought too is if you're running something like QLC Plus on your computer and you'd r rather have something a little more tactile, this, like an actual lighting board, you can pick up MIDI controller surfaces that have faders and buttons on them that would make them a lot similar to a traditional lighting console and you can connect those to your laptop. So say for instance, I'm using QLC Plus on my laptop and rather than just typing things in or mousing around, I'd like to have a, a tactile controller with some buttons and some faders, sliders, that kind of thing to actually control the lighting. 
well I can do that too so I'm actually sending MIDI signals from this control surface and most of the newer control surfaces now connect via USB cable so it's MIDI over USB cable going into your computer if you buy an older one you still might see the five pin uh, MIDI connections on the back of it but most of the newer ones are just using USB as well as most of the newer musical keyboards now are just connecting uh, MIDI via USB cable to your computer but that's another use of MIDI um, sending MIDI signals into the computer and then using them to control lighting software like QLC Plus. Finally we have what we call virtual MIDI connection so with virtual MIDI we're, we're creating virtual MIDI cables to connect two or more pieces of software within the same computer so this program over here is going to be playing back cues that are going to be sending MIDI signals over to this program to control lighting cues. So we're going to talk about all three ways of making connections then. The traditional MIDI over Ethernet or Wi-Fi and then finally virtual MIDI cables. So the traditional way of doing it is probably the easiest way of doing it. You can just get a hold of a USB MIDI interface. Something like this works really really well. Or this is a U6 MIDI Pro. Uh, you can pick up on Amazon and this gives you three MIDI ins and three MIDI outs connect by USB cable to your show control computer. But then you can send MIDI signals out to any device so it's fairly easy to understand. You're just going to make sure you set up your show control software um, to this device and then you're going to be using channels and note ons and notes off kind of thing I discussed in my first video about MIDI to send signals to these devices to have them do various things. So that's probably the easiest one to deal with just physical MIDI cable connections. Now the Cat5 and MIDI over Ethernet. Let's talk about that for a minute. You're going to need a program that will allow you to do this. And the favorite program that is out there for doing that is this software by Tobias Erickson. It's called RTP MIDI. And if you install this on your devices it will allow them to communicate over the Ethernet both via wired Cat5 cable and wirelessly. I have actually used this where I had a computer running my cues on it and I had a smartphone that I was using as a remote control sending MIDI signals from my smartphone when I was sitting down in the audience up to my show control computer in the control room and sending it signals via RTP MIDI to progress through various lighting and audio cues. But you need to make sure you have RTP MIDI. There's a lot of videos that are going to explain exactly how to install this and how to run it so I'm not going to get into the particulars of that. If you want to just uh, Google RTP MIDI and you will find a lot of different tutorials and explanations of how to get this set up on your laptop or your computer and get this running. And actually he even has here at the in his site a step-by-step -step tutorial where he'll go through and show you how to get this set up and how to make it run. So I'll include this down below but just look for RTP MIDI and this will allow you to send MIDI signals both via uh, Ethernet, via either Cat5 or via wirelessly. And then, of course, we have virtual MIDI. I actually have two of my uh, pieces of software up here and running. So, this is CSC Show Control. I can send audio cues from this, and I can also send out MIDI cues. I'm going to do some tutorials about this, but if you go to CSC Show Control, or again, if you Google this, or you look on YouTube, you will find some tutorials about how to set this up and how to use it. Um, I'm going to have uh, talk about this in some show control videos that I'm planning and making in the near future here. Not a free program. This program runs about $140 for the base version of it. Really like this. There are some freebies out there that you can find on my website, which you'll also find down below. Uh, Multiplay is one of them, and SFX6, and both of those programs will allow you to send MIDI signals. And in this case here, this was a show I did for a middle school and I had my cues here and here's my lighting cues over here so this is QLC software that's going to run my lighting 
cues in the theater. And I'll put this in run mode so you can see them all come up. And you can't see it, but if I do this, you can see it. You can see that there are MIDI cues embedded in here. Note on and note off commands. And I talked about that in my tutorial one about MIDI. So these cues here that you see in pink are actually sending MIDI commands over to QLC+. That way I can synchronize everything. And then you're also seeing my audio files in here. So I'll always start this with my first cue coming up here. And this is house, which is really not a cue. Then I'm on to Q2 here. Now when I fire Q2, you will notice that it also communicates over here and fires the blackout command. So now my blackout cue is over here running. And then uh, scene one, and the cool thing about this is since I'm using audio tracks here and I want various lighting changes to happen, this is all synchronized and timing. So I'm not only sending MIDI cues, but everything's synchronized. So the lighting cues are perfectly synchronized to the audio track and it's sending those cues over to QLC+. And you'll see that there's a timer going on here and eventually you'll fire the next one. But I'm just going to stop it. Now, how do you do this? The program I recommend for doing this is a program called Loopy. All right, and I'll put a link to this down below too. If you put this on your show control computer, it gives you some virtual MIDI ports where you can connect from one piece of software to another. Let me just go back to my software here for a minute. So in CSC Show Control, I just go to my MIDI output setup and I look for Loopy internal MIDI and that's going to be my channel that I'm outputting on. And then over here in QLC Plus, I'm going to my inputs and outputs and my input I want to be loopy internal MIDI. So it's really, really easy. Once you have it installed, it'll appear down in your system tray down the bottom here. And uh, then you just make a virtual connection. This piece of software is outputting over loopy. And this piece of software over here is accepting the input from loopy. I think I mentioned this in the first uh, video tutorial here. Just be careful. Do not set the input and output here to be loopy it will cause what we call MIDI feedback. And then you'll notice down in the system tray here that this will mute itself. Then you can open it up and you'll actually see a check mark on the mute and unmute that. Do not set this up so that input and output is both from loop B. Okay, so we're outputting loop P through here and we're inputting loop B MIDI in through here. So that's your virtual connection. That's probably the easiest one I found and it, you can use it free of charge. There's no charge for this program, and they talk about that down here. If you're going to use it commercially, they do require you to pay for it, but it, uh, it works fine without paying for it if you're going to just not be using it commercially. Now, if you need something more substantial, they do uh, do Loop B 3.0, but gives you uh, 1 to 30 different MIDI ports, 16 channels, so like tons and tons of virtual MIDI outputs in here. I think this runs about $20 for this version, but I found the Loop B1 to be perfect for me, and I can still send out multiple MIDI channels, so one channel controlling my light board, one channel controlling my mixer, one channel controlling my PowerPoint computer, and it's all controlled from the show control computer. And then finally, they do have a product on here called IP MIDI that sends MIDI over Ethernet, just like RPT MIDI does. A little more pricier here, though. This one is about $80 for this. But uh, again, you're looking at, if you're looking at something like a more substantial setup here, where you've got a recording studio with multiple computers throughout the studio that you need to communicate MIDI with, then this might be certainly worth the $80 to uh, be able to communicate either using Cat5 cables or Wi-Fi to those various other computers in your studio. So that pretty much covers it. Using Loopy is very, very easy as I showed you. It's just a matter of selecting it once you get it installed and you know, selecting it, output and input into your software, then it works fine that way. Refer to some of my other videos about QLC Plus on how to automate faders and cues and buttons using MIDI. It's going to be working the same way whether you're using a physical MIDI controller with a USB cable or whether you're sending uh, virtual MIDI signals from a piece of software over here. Finally, 
I did recommend, and I have talked about this, make sure you grab yourself a copy of MIDI-AUX. This is really, really useful for troubleshooting MIDI connections. So if you're, whether it be virtual MIDI or you're sending MIDI over Cat5, it's very useful, or actual MIDI. I've used this in uh, the theater for troubleshooting a computer sample software where I had to use a keyboard to send MIDI signals to the sample software to be played back during a show and we're having trouble having to communicate and was able to solve the problems using MIDI-AUX. So I might do a tutorial on MIDI-AUX also in the future uh, because it's not just uh, being able to monitor but it also has MIDI mapping in it and MIDI filtering which allows you to do a lot of different things and a lot more control over what your MIDI is actually doing in your control setup. And I just thought I'd mention this. There is another product out there that you might run into called Spring Beats, which is virtual MIDI cables. I noticed that they had, did have some issues with Windows 10 and 11. Supposedly solved them. I've never used this. Um, you're welcome to try it, I guess. But again, my virtual MIDI that I've always stuck with has been uh, Loop B1, and that has worked very, very well for me. All right, hope this answers any questions. Usually, if you have any more questions about how to set these up, if you Google this or look for YouTube videos, you can find help about how to do that.